it's time to hate ourselves a little bit. Oh! We are working on the beautiful 1954 Chevy. I finally got my lowering kit in and all of my brake parts. So the goal for this video is to fire this old girl up and hopefully take her around the block. I don't know if we're gonna pull it off. We might be able to. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is start working on the lowering kit. Let's go. So I'm kind of going to do the lowering kit at the same time I'm going to install my new brake wheel cylinders. I kind of have to take half of that apart anyway to get the lowering kit installed. So while I have it apart, I might as well throw the new wheel cylinders on. I got new master cylinder, all new brake lines, all new fittings, and new wheel cylinders all around. So she's definitely going to be able to stop pretty well. I think I'm going to go ahead and do the lowering kit now. And while I have it apart, I'll probably throw the wheel cylinders in if it's not too much of a pain in the butt. Let's dig in. Okay, I got a little bit of a change of plan. Started digging in here. I need to obviously unbolt the spindle so that I can get the spring and the shock out. It's all very rusty. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just get all the brake stuff off, all four wheels, and then we're just going to soak all this with oil, WD-40, all that. I'll probably let it soak a day. And then I'll come in here tomorrow, unbolt all this shit whenever it's not so rusty. Because right now, it's just, it's all really rusty. I had to beat that off to get it. <laughs> it was bad. The drums and the shoes were actually kind of semi-rusted together. It was still rolling, but it wasn't rolling very well. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and break all that off. I got new shoes on all four corners. So, I'm going to go ahead and probably just break all this stuff down. Get it to bare like this. And we'll just shoot it all with WD-40. Yeah, let's do that. So I got all the brakes and all the brackets and everything off all four wheels. I went ahead and soaked it in transmission fluid and then also WD-40. You can see I just went crazy, sprayed it everywhere. What I'm going to do now is let this sit for, I don't know, a day or so. And then I'll come back over and start taking my suspension parts off. But what I'm probably going to do whenever we come back tomorrow, <laughs> you can really see how much I soaked it there. I'm going to probably power wash everything really well. After it soaks, it should soak into the metal and the bushings and all that crap so I can power wash it. But I want to get all this grease off of here. And what I might do whenever I get it all taken apart, we might go ahead and just shoot this in some chassis paint while we got it all cleaned up and stuff. And it'll look good whenever we're putting our new brake lines on and whatnot. So... Probably let all this soak overnight, and then we will break out the power washer and get all this crud off of here. Like, I started chiseling some of it off. I mean, that's only like 5% of it. There's so much. We're going to let her soak, and then we'll probably power wash the hell out of it. I'm excited, though. The uh, brake lines, half of them were actually good. They still had fluid in them, which is just crazy. But two of the wheel cylinders were locked up. And if you're doing two, I mean, you, you might as well do them all anyway, even if they weren't locked up. We're going to do all new shoes, all new wheel cylinders. I think it'll be awesome. We'll come back tomorrow. The next day. It is the next day. Everything is really soaked in oil. We're going to go ahead, break the power washer out now. And I got the uh, jet on that's basically just a, <laughs> whatever, thousand pounds of pressure needle. We're going to try and blow all this grease off. It is really bad in the front end. They always are on these, but I'd like to be a little bit cleaner before I put all new parts back on. And I'd also like to probably hit it with a wire wheel and go ahead and paint it while I got everything apart. So let's power wash it. Oh yeah, we're making a mess in here now, baby. Ugh. Gross. Half of this shit has hit me in the face. Check it out, I got the new master cylinder all put in. I had to make my own shafts in here. It was a pain in the ass. I don't even know if I got it on camera or not, but everything's working good. Clutch pedal, brake pedal. I got a 
bench bled. That way you don't have to try and bleed it when it's in the car. I'm getting ready to put it back in. And I think, I'm kind of looking at it. I have to weld these pedals anyway. This is kind of rusty up here, it's thin. I think I'm gonna go ahead and actually cut up to these holes. And then I can just put it all back. It'll be easy going in. It'll be easy when I'm running my new lines, having a big hole in here to do everything. So I think I'm gonna make this hole a little bit bigger. It'll make it a lot easier on me. And I think it's gonna be good too because I wanna make sure everything is working before I get the sheet metal put back in. What I mean by that is I wanna make sure clutch is perfect, brake is perfect before I just box all this back in and I can't get to it. Let's cut some shit. I forgot I had to weld these pedals on. I was gonna do it inside the car, but I think it's gonna be easier just to do them here. I'll just get them all TIG welded and then we'll put it all in together. So let's do that real quick. Check them out. They are in and working. Great news, clutch actually works. I can feel a lot of tension in there. It's actually pulling it back, which is awesome. I was worried because it would seize when I would put it down. I thought the clutch was bad, but it ended up being just a bad master cylinder. So I think we don't have to change the clutch. Very, very excited about that. I do need another spring for my brake pedal because if I push it all the way down, it sticks and it should have another spring on it. I think I broke it because I can't find it. I need to go get a spring. So we're gonna just pause that. I'm gonna go ahead and start changing out the wheel cylinders and putting the brake shoes and everything back together. That took so much longer than it should have. Had a bunch of rusty bolts that would not come off, which is really, really hard when you're dealing with the front suspension. I had to drop it away. I don't really like to drop it. I'd rather take these off in the front, but they didn't want to come off. That is one hell of a difference. Cool thing about this is the coil is a little bit bigger, so it's a little bit softer. If you were to just cut that one, which I've done plenty of times, it really, really rides rough because that coil pattern is meant to be a certain height. Whenever you cut them, it just rides like a son of a bitch. This one, as you can see, even though it's shorter, it has a wider coil pattern, so it'll be a lot softer. And now we gotta put all this crap back together, which is gonna take a while, but let's go. <laughs> Okay, got it lowered. Holy crap, this has been a huge job. I think I got eight hours on just this side. <laughs> I mean, the good news is it's probably gonna take me only an hour or two for the other side because I've learned essentially just will, what won't come off on this car. The ways I've done it before was not working at all. And then putting everything back was almost harder than taking it off. <laughs> so I'm gonna give up on finishing the brakes. I'm gonna put the wheel cylinders on and just put all the brakes back together. I'm gonna finish getting it lowered and then we can at least look at it lowered. And then on the next video, I'll button up all these brakes and uh, we'll take her for a drive. But I mean, it's, oh, <laughs> I cannot believe how many hours I have in that. Good news is this is all 100% done. I got new springs in there. Check it out. Oh yeah. Very, very happy about that. Like I said, I'm gonna still go ahead and put all my new wheel cylinders on while I'm in there messing with stuff, but I, there's just no way. It's, it's Sunday, we try and get these out by Tuesday. Richard had some Monday, so I mean, there's just no way. This ended up being a lot bigger job than I thought it was gonna be, than it usually is. Like I said, I've done it before, but that's the, one of the only downsides of when you're doing like a traditional build. What, what is a traditional build? A traditional build is basically you build it the way they would have in the time period. So let's say, you know, 25 year old guy in 1962, he bought a, you know, eight, 10 year old car. This is how he would have built it in the sixties. Obviously there's no airbags, you know, he's not going crazy. He's not gonna put a, you know, like a new Camaro 
uh, front end on it. So this is how they kind of hot rod them back in the day, which is really cool. I love traditional builds, but the thing with traditional builds is when you have to deal with original stuff, instead of just cutting it out and getting rid of it, it takes time. So it's good that we're doing it. We're replacing the important stuff, brakes, suspension, stuff like that, but it's still using the older technology, which will be a fun car. But I mean, this ain't going to be one you're going to be, you know, you're not going to drive this to California doing hundred miles an hour. It's just not going to happen. This is a cruiser. So I said all that because I cannot believe how much time I spent on one wheel. So let's get to this side. <laughs> Check it out, got the spring out, had something crazy happen. So it says in the manual, you put your jack right under there and then you take these bolts out and the whole you know, lower A-arm can come out. No big deal, I've done it a hundred times. Had my jack there, didn't realize it because I'm rushing around being an idiot and my jack was actually on that point and not that point. So when I got the bolts loose for the lower A-arm, the spring unsprung, which is fine. That's how it's supposed to do, except with the jack being in the wrong place, it shot the jack three feet away. And then it just, you know, luckily I kept that jack. I make sure that it was never, I always have it where it's too low to let it come out. But I mean, it sprung down crazy hard. I wasn't anywhere near it. I was over here. But that just goes to show you. Even if you've done something a hundred times, don't think you're too fucking smart to have something come apart. Like this, these have so much stored energy in them. They are very dangerous and you need to respect it. And I just put my jack up under there, figured it was where it needed to be, didn't bother double checking it. So just in case anybody out there thinks they're a master mechanic or anything, <laughs> you know, I promise it does not matter. The mechanics do not care if it's the hundredth time you did it or the first time. If you don't have something where it needs to be and you don't have some sort of a double thing in place for insurance, you can really get hurt. <laughs> and I'm very lucky that that didn't cost me a finger or something because I'm, because I just was, you know, in a rush trying to get stuff done quick quick trying to get this video done and sometimes you need to just take a break and chill so that's <laughs> just just a warning for people what, what's funny the times i have been hurt from something it's never my first time it's always something i've done a hundred times and i just you know oh i know it like the back of my hand and then you do something stupid like this luckily i didn't get hurt never think you're too smart or too cool to uh not get bit in the ass so very happy this side i'm so far i'm only in this side about 25 minutes which is great because at this point uh, on that side i was like four or five hours in i tried to undo these bolts they didn't want to go I tried to undo those bolts they didn't want to go um, usually they'll kind of, you know, they're a little bit easier. They're never easy. This, this is by far the easiest way. I just don't like to usually do it this way because of how much is just involved with what wants to come down. It's not that big of a deal if the jack's in the right place, but still it's usually easier, I think, to take these out, but that's all hindsight. Let's get this new stuff put in. Check it out. <laughs> new springs, new shocks. Front end is done. Super excited about that. We're going to move to the rear now. Get these rear end blocks put in. I don't have the new shocks for this yet because I need to measure the ones I have. We can still get the rear kit put in and uh, throw the tires on. Let her sit down and see how she's sitting. Should look pretty good with a three inch drop. But uh, yeah, let's get on the rear end real quick. Almost done, last wheel, run my hand right across the frame, and it's good. So naturally, it's time to hate ourselves a little bit. Oh! Woo! Yes! Oh, I love it. Woo! Boy, I tell you, if you ever need to feel alive, get some brake cleaner right in an open wound. God damn, that feels good. Woo! Okay, back to work. Thank you. 
It looks so good. I mean, the, the airbag guy I mean, wants to just lay it on the ground, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, that looks good. We could go a little bit farther in the back. We should probably go a little bit farther in the back. Well, maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> Too much farther than the back. <laughs> oh, sweet. Let's roll it outside. Man, that thing looks good. <laughs> I got 15s on the back, 14s in the front. What I might do is switch them. I think that'll get my back down a little bit more. And I don't know that it'll necessarily raise the front, but it'll get the back down a little bit more. Oh, man, she looks good. Looks real good. I got to adjust one of my shocks. The driver's side shock, I got it kind of wrong. And so it's actually a little bit lower on that side. I didn't think I, I don't think I put the right bushing in. <sighs> my goodness gracious. Man, that thing looks good. Cool. I got new hubcaps coming too. Those were old shitty ones. They don't really have much chrome left to them. Sweet. I'm so excited. Next video, we're gonna get all the brakes done. I was gonna try and go crazy and get all the brake work done today and then maybe have Richard edit it like Tuesday morning, blah, blah. Either way, I don't think it's going to happen because either way, I know it's not going to happen. Let's put it that way because I forgot I have to make all the lines. I mean, you can spend four or five hours just making all the lines and shit. So we're going to do all that next episode. Go ahead and run the fuel lines, put some gas in the tank, fire it up and uh, take her for a spin. Oh, that's a cool ass looking car, man. I love 54s. Now, I don't know if you've heard, but I think I'm going to give that car away for free whenever I get to 100K subscribers. Very, very exciting. Hopefully... I get to 100K sooner than later. Maybe it'll take forever. Who knows? But whenever I get to it, I'm going to give that away. So hit that subscribe button. Hopefully, we'll give it away sooner than later. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff I tell you at the end of videos. Check out some more of my other videos. Peace. Love you. I can't lie.